everybody that their candles ready.
Thank you, Raylene, for that wonderful introduction. <clears throat> um, as you can see, you have me this morning instead of Reverend Joe. Um, he is taking his vacation, and we wish him well and rest on that um, vacation. And it is also the beginning of Advent. Um, so we will worship together as our um, Advent family for this week is the Courier Doherty family. Um, and when we get in that point in the service, um, we will light our Advent candle here in the sanctuary as the Courier Doherty's light their candle in their home and as we all are able to light our first candle. Please join me in our call to worship with your microphones muted, uh, but joining along with us. After such suffering, we go searching for a sign, any sign. The sun seems to dim, the moon fails, the stars fall. We need a sign, any sign. Be aware, stay awake, change is coming. We hope that the one, that the human one is on the way, gathering the faithful from the four winds into a place of peace. We need a sign, any sign. Be aware, stay awake, change is coming. Nature once offered signs to depend on. The fig tree put out tender leaves and we knew summer was near. But climate today is hurting and unpredictable. We need a sign, any sign. Be aware, stay awake, change is coming. So together we search for a sign of the one who is coming. Clarity in confusion, green, shoot in a barren landscape. Song arising in a weary soul. Be aware, stay awake. Change is coming. Come, let us worship. The Advent liturgy you have posted on your, uh, on, on the Zoom uh, slideshow. And I would invite you, when it comes time for the Courier Doherty family to light the Advent candle that we also light our candles. Today is the beginning of Advent, the preparation time for celebrating Christ's birth. We are here because God promises to our ancestors came true when Jesus was born. God's promise is kept each time we worship because Christ is in our midst. O oh, Holy One, we light this first candle a candle of grief in the midst of the stories of the last year. Let it burn through these weeks as a beacon to become the light of hope. Let it guide us to your presence in our midst, leading us to your justice and joy in the service of peace. God be with us in this light of hope. O oh God, we thank you that Jesus brought hope into our world. By the good news of the Bible, you are still bringing hope to people. Help us to be ready to welcome Jesus so that we may think good thoughts and do good deeds and so that we may be a people of hope in our world. Amen.
Thank you for that music, it was lovely. Our scripture reading this morning in the Old Testament is Isaiah 64, verses through 9. Yet. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait to be hip. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourselves, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and then delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. May God bless our understanding of these holy words. If you'll please join me in a moment of prayer. Come into our midst, O Holy One, rider of the clouds of heaven, surprising answers to heartfelt prayer. In whatever way you choose, come. Shake us up, help us find you at work in our lives, showing the way to make all things new. In Jesus' name we pray. Please join me in our unison prayer. God of justice and peace, from the heavens you rain down mercy and kindness that all on earth may stand in awe and wonder before your marvelous deeds. We raise our heads in expectation that we may yearn for the coming day of the Lord and stand without blame before your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Amen. God in community, holy in one, our forgiveness, our justice, our healing. Hear us as we lift our prayer, as we have been taught saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God is faithful and gives us grace in our Christ Jesus. In this fellowship, we can count on being enriched in speech, in knowledge, in every spiritual gift. Let us give thanks in Christ. We are forgiven and, and sent forth to work for God's reign among us. Amen. Our New Testament uh, scriptures come from the gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. But also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man journeying, going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And when I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here ends our reading from the Gospel according to Mark, may God grant us wisdom and courage for our interpretation. If you'll join me in a quick prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We have many things to be celebrating this, this, this Sunday, and that is somewhat difficult to understand uh, and it's certainly difficult to um, know within ourselves as we look out into a world that um, we see very little hope. Today, we are to be hope. Today, we are celebrating hope, the coming of Advent. It's also the beginning of the new liturgical year. But our readings this morning are a bit ominous and uh, 
should offer hope at its first reading, but I don't know about you, but it offered a little bit of fright uh, for my first reading. Almost like that parent that tells you, you better get your room cleaned or I'm coming up there. When I hear that forceful, when I hear that forceful voice of God, sometimes that's, that's immediately what comes to mind. You should hear your, I should hear my father's voice saying that, but it was my mother. She made the rules in the house. Today, on our first Sunday of Advent, it is the beginning of our preparation for the coming and the birth of Christ. It is the beginning of our season in which we celebrate and build up to those. Today, we do not have those readings. We don't have those happy-go-lucky readings. We have those wait-and-keep-watch readings. Our readings here were written many, many years ago, and they were written for an audience that after Christ died, was expecting him to be back pretty soon. And as the generations went and went and went, and Christ did not come back, these words stayed written. And so that idea, that idea of the second coming, that idea that Christ will return one day, And I don't know about you, but I ask myself, what will Christ be returning to? We have had a year of some of the loudest noise. I think that's the only polite way I can put it. Some of the loudest noise we have ever heard. And me being 29, I haven't heard much, but uh, I think I could find some older folks to agree with me there. We have had a, a, our lives have been upended. Our lives have been upended by an election season that has dominated everything, and that's still not over. Our lives have been upended by a virus, which if you are not an advanced scientist, it's very difficult to understand. Our holidays and our families have been almost torn apart. There are many who we know personally who have been affected by this virus, who have caught this virus, some who have not made it out from this virus. But here we are at this beginning season of Advent beginning of our new liturgical year and we are to look at hope we are to preach hope well I am anyways and we are to expect hope one thing I can never quite get out of my mind is the story I had heard uh, from, uh, I, I, may, I may have quoted, I'm sure I've quoted him before, uh, if I haven't, uh, it's possible Joe had, but it's a story I've heard from uh, Fred Craddock, who is a teacher, um, he's since passed away, but he was a teacher, and he taught scripture and preaching and, uh, and, and so forth down at a college, um, and he came from rural Tennessee. You know, he came from West Tennessee in a time of segregation. And he tells the story of returning to his home area in West Tennessee at a time around the holidays uh, several years ago. And he was visiting an old friend, an old high school friend named Buck. And Buck had a restaurant that he had run for some years. But he noticed that things were different. So when Fred entered the restaurant and said, Merry Christmas, Buck. He did not receive the usual welcome, including free coffee and a piece of pie. That would put me off as well. Instead, Buck took Fred, he took him aside and he said, let's go for a cup of coffee. A rather confusing request since they were in a restaurant. But Fred soon discovered that his friend was struggling with a moral dilemma 
and needed a listening ear. Did you see the curtain? Buck asked. I saw the curtain. I always see the curtain, Fred answered. What Buck meant by curtain is this. There were a number of buildings called shotgun buildings in this little town. Long buildings with two entrances, front and back. One entrance off the street and one off the alley in the back. Buck's restaurant was one of these buildings with white people coming from the front entrance off the street and black people entering off the alley in the back. The two groups separated by a curtain and the kitchen. Did you see the curtain? Buck asked again. I saw the curtain. The curtain has come down. Good, bring it down. That's easy for you to say. Come in here from out of state and tell me how to run my business. Okay, leave it up if you must. I can't leave it up, Buck replied. Well, then take it down, Fred, Fred replied to him. I, I can't take it down. Buck was in terrible shape and after a while acknowledged to Fred, if I take down the curtain, I lose a lot of my customers. If I leave the curtain up, I lose my soul. That idea of the curtain, the idea of the curtain segregating the restaurant in a time when racial tensions were so high in such a uh, segregated area. Maybe not much different from now, although I'd say the curtain's a little bit more invisible. But I'd say the curtain's still there. I'd say the curtain's still there in terms of wealthy and not wealthy. Who can afford dinner and who can't afford dinner? I would say the curtain is still there, but much more invisible for the children who are able to afford to learn competently at home and those who are slipping through the system, no doubt. But when we're at the mercy <clears throat> of something we don't understand, this virus, which we don't understand, we have to do what the experts tell us. We have to do which will keep us safe. But no doubt the curtain exists there as well. Those who can get a test and those who cannot. Those who can afford treatment and those who cannot. Aside from the virus, the curtain has always been there in regards to health care. You get what you pay for. And if you have the money to pay for it, you get very good health care. But if you don't have the money to pay for it, you get to go to the county hospital where the doctors graduated bottom of their class and they're not really sure what's wrong. The curtain is definitely still there in our world, but maybe a little bit more invisible now than the curtain that hung in Buck's restaurant. But I would say on this Sunday, when we are to celebrate hope, when we are to celebrate the coming of the Christ. There is not a single figure in history which has been able to offer hope than Jesus Christ. There's not a single thing we can't do with Christ by our side. And as we welcome the Christ this Advent season, I hope that we can bring that curtain down and as we continue on in this season and we continue on into next year and further and further and we get talks of a vaccine and we get, get talks of uh, becoming immune and so many things that will hopefully make our lives better. Let us also bring down the curtain that separates the haves from the haves nots. 
Let us bring down the curtain of injustice as we work towards that. Let us bring down the curtain of racism. Let us bring down the curtain of partisanism. Let us bring down the curtain. Because Christ can't come if the curtain is up. You won't be able to see him if the curtain is up. As we sit today with hope on our minds and rereading the scriptures, let us keep awake. Let us keep aware on what we can do so that the world can look better to the Christ who has yet to return. Let us bring the curtain down so that he'll be able to see the world in which he envisioned. Let us here bring the curtain down. Amen. Now is the time in our service where we share our prayers, our concerns, and celebrations that we have in our hearts. Um, I would like to start us off with uh, thanks, many thanks to this worship team here this morning that has gotten us ready 
which includes, you all see her, but you do not see her, Betsy, who sets up our godly play display here, where the prophets are pointing the way to Bethlehem. All right, will you all join your hearts with me this morning? Almighty God, as we sit here, as we sit here in this service, watching from home or here in the sanctuary, many thoughts bear heavy on our minds and on our hearts. I think many of us know someone who has health concerns, and those concerns weigh heavy on us. We ask you to be with them in that precious time of concern and that precious time of hope. We seek prayer and guidance this morning on what best we can do for those who are sick and dying, for those who are hungry or not fit enough, for those who don't have a roof over their heads and who call the streets and the sidewalks their home, for those who have family problems, for those who are not able to connect with their family, for those who are getting sick and those who are getting older. Be with them if their time on this earth, but closer to you, is coming. We pray that you be with them, that you be by their side, that you hold their loved ones close. As we, as we sit here, there are so many things that weigh on our mind, oh God. We ask you to be with us. We ask you to be with them. We ask you to be all around us on this hope, on this day, in which we begin our journey and our preparation to usher in the birth of our Christ, of our Lord. Let us keep in mind this journey. Let us keep in mind through the other Sundays and up until Christmas and even into Epiphany, what those Sundays truly mean, what those days truly mean, and what the scriptures are trying to tell us. We ask this in everything and all in our hearts, those that have been said and those unsaid, in the name of Jesus the Christ, amen.
And now for our benediction. Be people of hope. Let hope live in your heart and share the hope of Christ with all you meet. Share hope by noticing someone else's humanity. Share hope by listening to someone's story. Share hope by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share hope. As you go out into the wonder of God's creations, share hope with those you meet. Amen. Nice, Raylene.